back then after the second forward tilt you dash back again so here yeah so this is correct although instead of rolling back you should have probably short hopped back and then on reaction to him going for this down air you should have nared it Yeah, so it's just short hop back, and then on reaction to him pressing a button, you nair. Because he's either going to dash grab, or he's going to jump in at you. This is fine. This is fine. You probably didn't want to use your jump there. And you should have just up B diagonally. And the reason for this, that is this. Uh... J12 actually could have taken your stock there because you used your jump. So here, if you had up bead, he could have... So here, instead of shielding, he was supposed to toss an egg. The egg goes over here, and he can toss eggs and chain you until you have to up B without grabbing the ledge, and then he can forward air spike you on that. So here, what happened is you he tosses the egg, you go diagonal, you get hit by the egg, and then after you get hit by the egg, you DI away. And then if he throws a second egg, you double jump air dodge through it. And then up B here. So don't be so quick to use your uh, double jump all the time. So here, you just punish him with that. Okay. And then you immediately turn around short hop back here. Okay. This is good. So this one should... So this back here after God damn it goes so far. Fucking hate Twitch. Well, something I was gonna give to you to use at Skypad was a I got a an a Aver Media delivered yesterday. So that you can get that because I don't want to watch it on this shit. Because the controls are awful. So so here. He's at full hop height, which means you do what? Yes, and drift away. Yeah, just short hop up air in place and then drift away. And the up air would have eaten the egg. It would have covered over here. He could have landed here on the corner. You wouldn't have cared. So here. So, all right. Now, this is part of why I was looking forward to having this conversation, because I know you're really going to be happy to hear this. So after you are supposed to up air this egg, or up air, and he tosses this egg. Now you're not reacting to him tossing egg, you're reacting to him rising. So it doesn't matter that he's egging here. If he had double jumped, you still would have wanted that up air. So here. God damn it. So yeah, so here, after the up air you want to react to him tossing eggs so let's see here what frame is sephiroth up b or sorry side b You sure about that? Wait, did you say 7 or 17? Yeah. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, it's minus 17 on block. Okay. Yeah, so basically... Yeah, that's unfortunate. I don't know that you're going to be able to react to Yoshi Egg Toss. It's unfortunate. Yeah, I was going to say here's where you get to side B. Because his up B is the same frame date as your side B. So basically... You yeah, so there. So here it's fine, because... Yeah, so here, you back air, you catch the up B. If he had drifted forward here, by the way, 
that up B would have stalled out and hit him anyways. So this is a correct use. Now, the problem here is that you drifted in with the back air. He actually could have grabbed you, but he was so he was afraid of the back air, and so he shielded. Also, you going for... God damn it. So yeah, you going for that forward air, let him get here. If you had... Okay, so that's on our list. Are you writing it down? All right. So I need more back air practice. Yeah, so this up B works. And you get up B to side B. Or up, up B to side tilt. But this was not great. And the main reason being you could have just straight up forward tilted in the first place. And he wouldn't have been able to punish it. So you caught him off guard. So that's fine. And I'm more so pointing it out because it's going to be an issue later. So here. Yeah, so this position. Okay, so when he's off stage like this, if you want, you can... This back air is fine, but if you want, you can preemptively side B to cover him trying to up B from right here. But assume that he's going to toss an egg and time the side B to hit to stop any egg tosses. Alternatively, just forward tilt to the left. Like, not down tilted, just to the left. Because again, you're forward tilting the egg, you're not forward tilting Yoshi. You don't care about Yoshi. The problem is the egg, because if the egg hits you, or you have to shield the egg, then that means that you are out of position. Now, if you parry the egg, you can just buffer a forward tilt out. That's fine. But yeah, you saw how you had to roll out here, or felt the need to roll out here. Yeah, so you have to roll here, and you're out of position even though. So here, as soon as you saw Yoshi full hop, guess what you're supposed to do? Short hop up here and move towards center. So this is this dash back is fine. Yeah, so I think this up B was on reaction to the egg toss, which makes it better. So this four tilt here. Back here is good. You see full hop. What do you do? Why? Oh, away from him in this case. Yeah. Well, most of the time when you're up bearing and they're full hopping, they're full hopping from the corner. So here, you short hop up here. That would have hit him. And then you could have gotten your back air after all. So there, that nair was fine. Uh, when you nair, don't try and follow up off of the nair unless they're at percent. Like, there's no combo here. You just get to set up. So retreat the nair from where he's going. So you see him drifting to the right, which means you go left. If you saw him stall here and hang out left, drift to the right. And the reason for that is because you're creating space for a forward tilt. So don't try and fight him directly. So, again, this isn't about combos. This is about spamming neutral positions. So basically, after you nair him, it resets to neutral, and you focus on putting out your next neutral setup. So you get another free safe swing, and if it doesn't hit, then oh well. If they tried to take the space that you're closing off, then they get hit. And, well, that's great too, because then you get to go back to square one and keep go back to back air. So here, you, yeah, instead of this forward air, so you get for this forward air to follow up on the nair, and it works, and that's fine. But if he had air dodged here, what would have happened is he would have air dodged, landed next to you, you'd be positive and be able to get a jab. But if he drifted a little bit with his nair, landed here, and then drifted off here, and you jabbed, then jab one would whiff, and he would be able to shield jab two. And yeah, so it it's he would probably wouldn't even have done anything to you, but it would have been in a position where it forces you to stop forward tilting and back airing, and he has to fight you like Yoshi. So at that point, he can th threaten to short hop forward air and catch you if you go back here. If you like short hop and try and forward air back, then he can if he short hop forward airs at the same time you short hop forward air. His forward air will stuff yours, and it'll still catch you for rolling back. So you can't reset positioning like that, and that'll come up later. 
on your rolls because he does indeed do that. So here, yeah, so this is fine. You should just short hop up here and drift toward this direction here. And you want to focus on staying just outside of his max forward air. So you want to short hop up here so that the sword covers over here. And then forward tilt to downward angle it. And assume that he's going to toss an egg and aim the forward tilt at the egg. So if you had upward angled it here, well, first of all, if you had preemptively short hop up here, he would have jumped into this. Yeah, so it started here. He so he read you DIing away from him, and that's why he dash attacked here. So he was hard committing to that. And this is where you go. So this is what happens when you try to combo on something that wasn't a combo. So he had a read on you. His reasoning behind his read was solid. Oh, uh, he's been trying to wall me out, therefore he wants to be away from me. Solid reasoning, right? So he was wrong. And so here he is, because he guessed on what he thought was going to be a true string. He was playing on dash attacking, put you up here, and then pressuring you, and he wanted to keep pressing buttons. So you reset. You're fine with all this. But so, but because he overcommitted, he's now in a position he didn't want to be instead of the position he had wanted to be, and that's going to come up later. So it's fine. Yep, and that's why he's dash attacking, by the way. Good. Good. So here, this is not good. And the reason for that is because you could have run across the stage and put an upward taut angled forward tilt up here to force him onto the ledge. Short hop up here. Yeah. So that Nair actually would have gotten you hit because so this is how committal that was. You could not short hop up here there. Like it you would have gotten hit by his Nair because you didn't have time. It's fine. That Nair was risky, but it's fine. And you got a lot of reward for it because you get to do more back airs. No. Oh. Yeah, that was you very clearly running up and trying to fare. So what happened here in your brain? Was you're like, oh, Yoshi's here. I'm going to run up and forward there. So, yeah, it's after you get. So, every time you go for an air, 100% of the time, I not, shouldn't say 100, a very large percent of the time, and this isn't just Yoshi, this is every character. After you nair them, you're always going to go for that forward air. So, you're going to take forward tilt. So back here. So yeah, you take a 20 something damage and now you're in the corner. So that dash grab was a call out on you shielding. This was not worth. He just j fucked up and jabbed instead of down tilting. See? Does it look familiar? Yeah, no, this is a habit of yours. And this is what... So this is what we're looking at. So... We look for patterns on when you don't follow the game plan. We aren't just asking, well, did you follow the game plan? Uh, who cares? It's why did you not follow the game plan? And what can we do to practice replacing whatever precedes it with something else? So after you near, I want you to pay attention to where they go and then focus on hitting the Yoshi around the Yoshi. And do it with a short hop up here if they're full hop or higher, or back air if they're not. So, yeah, so that that forward air, if you had just jumped with your back turned here, you could have gotten out of back air. So I want to be clear before you write anything down. I want you to specifically practicing practice shielding with your back to your opponent. I want you to practice getting a turnaround before you shield. So only the shittiest players are going to consistently give you a shield grabbable aerial. Now, granted, I'm in that 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 group of people, but still, 
The uh, as a rule of thumb, you just back air spamming is going to shit on every player who gives you those grabs. So the rest of your game plan crushes those players. After that level of player, you're going to get people who like short hop near your shield and then drift up to cross you up. And they're going to land right here and you can shield grab that. If they do something like, let's say Yoshi is trying to cross up and fair you and land right here, then you get to grab that, right? So what is the counter? Like, what can they do if they are getting grabbed for crossing you up? What do they do? Exactly. So then they're going to do, there's two kinds. They'll either land right here and try and go for jab jab. Or they will space it out and land like right here and fair the back of your shield. Is there anything you can do out of shield that will hit that? Like, it, can you forward air? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, me either. You can parry forward tilt, but that's pretty much it. So, my reasoning is, if you can't punish it directly, then just immediately put yourself in position so that you can go into neutral as soon as possible. Can you always short hop back air out of shield if he spaces out something on your shield? Hell yeah. So, anything he does that's minus earns you a jump. Because anything that is more then minus three or minus three or worse on your block is a jump. And what is the startup of back here? 14. So that means anything that's minus 17 or more. And when I say minus 17, it has to be hitting your body on frame one. So because your body hurt box moves up when you jump, that effectively means they need an anti air. They have to anti-air you in those first 17 frames. Because you're also... Okay, 18 frames then. So you got 18 frames, or they have 18 frames to hit you after they touch you, your shield. And you don't care if they press the button or not. They can hold shield. So if they press nothing, you don't care. If they press something, they got hit. If they move away from you, you don't care. Because you can just walk up and forward tilt them. So, the uh, essentially, you just get to go into your super neutral mode, but there's nothing they can do to stop you because he pressed a button on your shield. So you're punishing him. So you're getting frame advantage, which means you get to start your thing, but your thing beats all their things, which means they don't get their turn. So and you, do, you don't hit them directly. But do can they possibly beat what you're doing? No. Even if they parry the back air after they touch your shield, like they don't get to hit you. You get another back air. So they yeah, no, that it's just so fucking broken. So yeah. So you get this back throw, you go up here and you rar. So you turn around, full hop up air here. Or actually you rar short hop double jump up here onto the platform and if they go low what do you do okay and you need to practice that by the way can you yeah i don't think i i, I saw you go for a couple runoff back airs but you only run off back here i never saw you once the off the top of my head now granted i watched this while i was walking to walmart on my break but still <laughs> So, you just put down the controller here. Yeah, so you get all this off of a back throw. So, basically, he should be dead now. Because you get this up air, and either the up air hits him and kills him, or what would actually happen is if you hit him, he gets double jump armor, so you immediately land and do a sh another short hop up air while drifting out of his down B range. So assume that he down B's on hit or fast fall nairs on hit, and then just short hop up air while drifting out of that range. Does that make sense? And so you could have short hop up air here. He's going to hard drift to this platform. And then after you land with a short hop up air, you immediately turn 
to the left and short hop up air again. And then if he tries to run off the platform or if he drops through the platform, he gets hit. If he just chills over here in the corner and just walks up here, then he gets some stage control and he punishes you by taking that stage control. So he gets a better position, but at worst, that still puts you here and that gives you two or three more back airs. Yeah, so here, you, if you have to double jump, then it needs to be because you're killing him directly. If you're not killing him directly, then this is bad. And the reason for that is because, do you know why I tell you to short hop double jump, or short hop uh, up air on reaction to full hop? So, Yoshi's full hop. Uh, what is up here, by the way? What is Sephiroth's up here? What frame is it? Frame 16, so 19. Plus the 20 on reaction is 39 frames. Does it sound about right? And then I'm assuming it'll actually be closer to frame 40. Does that sound fair? Okay. You know what Yoshi's full hop is? 60 frames. No. You see where I'm going with this? Because you haven't practiced it. That's why. That's always the answer. It's not because it's physically impossible. It's because you haven't practiced it. So that's why it's on your practice list. And I will tell you what specifically to set the CPU on for this practice. So uh, his full hop fast fall is 42 frames. Is that enough time for your sword to come out and contest his fast, full hop fast fall in air? I agree. So, And that's assuming optimal full hop fast fall, by the way. That in reality, generally Yoshi is going to be drifting before he fast falls. So it's going to be more than 42 frames. But even with your reaction time and the frame delay input, you still have a few frames of leeway before you account for his suboptimal fast fall to recognize what that is. So the faster, uh, you're probably going to be too slow at first, and that's okay. I want you to keep practicing it anyway, because there will be a point in which you can recognize it, and it will be physically impossible for Ford to open you up. Because you're doing it on reaction, which means there's no guessing. There's no hard read that he can make. Like here, uh, I don't know if you've heard the commentary of this match. Uh, don't don't listen to it. Basically, like after I'm trying to remember which game it was, but basically, the commentator started saying uh, you need to mix it up more, and that four has figured out the timing of your back airs. And then four immediately ran in and got hit by a back air. Like he shielded two back airs and then he got hit by a third back air. And at that point he almost threw his controller. So. Oh yeah. No, I, I, I was very happy. And that's not shade at four. It's just a matter of, I was like, yeah, this is working so well. And I was just happy. So I don't care that you beat four. I care that you, how you played. And I am happy that you beat four because I am willing to bet that even though you knew intellectually, like you had faith that it would work and help, being able to viscerally feel, oh my God, this is broken. Oh my God, this is so much better than it was before. Uh, that intuitive feeling is different. It's more reliable. Like you, you... I know that you are more likely to stick with it because you can feel how well it worked. Whereas some people have to make small, small improvements over time. And it's a little bit better. It's a little bit better. It's a little bit better. Like, uh, I know you didn't pay attention to our match records, but I did. And the improvements for like 
the improvements I was making were significant to my gameplay, but their effects on my performance were, were very small. And then obviously we're currently at the point where I win almost all of our matches. But basically I would every single time that I would have a practice session and then we would play, I would come in and I'd make improvements, but it only actually affected my performance by a few percent. But we've been doing this for months now. And so every week, you add on a few percent, a few percent, all of a sudden, I'm winning two-thirds of the matches. And a few percent, a few percent, all of a sudden, I'm winning three-quarters of the matches. And a few percent, a few percent, oh my god, I never lose. Now, that's obviously, it's not quite that point, but I win the vast majority of the matches now. And it's because I make those small, those small improvements, and you're still improving. It's just a matter of my improvements are more cumulative. So, uh, Jay Busta came over that, or yeah, Jay Busta and Tintin came over that night when you were at Skypad, and I think Jay Busta won one game, and he was there probably like five o'clock to nine o'clock, and the game was a game where I SD'd at zero, and I think he forward aired me and killed me at thirty. And it was last hit. And I'm not saying that to junk on Jay Busta. I am saying this because I want you to understand that the last time I played Jay Busta with my Rob was during quarantine and we were going even. Yeah, that that well that that's why I was leading up to this. I wanted to tell you like it was just he was hopelessly outmatched. But I I think he actually was winning more than he was losing when he played my Rob last time. So it yeah, he was just uh it was multiple levels out of his depth just because I had made those improvements. And he's been he plays with much better players than me. So like he he normally plays with uh, people who aren't on the Tampa PR, but would be like uh, Zade, Manny, J12, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The Mario player. You were playing against. Yeah. So yeah, that's Jay Busta. He uses multiple tags. That's his fault. Uh, Jesse. Yes. But yeah, my point being that making these small improvements adds up. So you've been making the small improvements the whole time. You just weren't applying them all simultaneously. So like you, if this was you playing the way you play against me. So like I would watch you play and then I'd watch you play at Skypad. I like this is I wish he played like this versus me. I would not lose to him. Like and then and then you come back over and you just be spamming back here and I'm like, God, this sucks. Yeah, so it doesn't matter who you're playing against and it does based on certain things, but for now, what we're into on where you're at on your flow chart is you are supposed to essentially play the same regardless of the player. Because uh, it's literally just going to be a matter of flow chart. And player level is irrelevant. It's a matter of do they reach this part of my flow chart or not? And so we are establishing your flow chart, what the baseline is, and that baseline is back air. And it's not that there aren't counters to back air, it's that they're so much harder and so much less consistent to perform than you are as a player with your skill able to perform it. So it's possible for Ford to counter it, and he does counter it multiple times, but Ford's ability to counter what you're doing is so much less consistent than your ability to perform it that it was a non-issue. So, so here, 
yeah, so you get this back throw. And so you just go for a preemptive up air. So short hop, instant double jump up air over here if you want. Or you can full hop double jump while drift starting here and then drift over to the platform. So that if he tries to double jump to center, he gets caught by this one. Whereas here, if you just short hop instant double jump and get the up air that auto cancels, if he tries to air dodge this up air, then you can just forward tilt him if he goes straight down. Like if he tries to fast fall air dodge, you forward tilt him and he's dead. If he drifts in with an air dodge, you just short hop back towards center and you back air. And there, you don't care if he gets hit or not by the back air because the point of the back air is to set it so that you're here and he's anywhere else. So basically, you're making sure this section of the stage is off limits. So it's about positioning. Percent doesn't matter. Like, you can kill him at 0%. You need to understand, the entire point of this is to control your positioning. You are always going to be in the dominant position. And then if it's like Kazuya or something, and he zero to deaths you from the corner, from left to right, then it, whatever, that's fine. You're still supposed to do it. And we'll address that on your gameplay. And if it comes up, until it comes up, this is what I want you to do. So basically, we start with your level one flow chart, and that's what this is. And then the more people bring up counters to you, which, as you can see, is not going to necessarily come up a whole lot. So a lot of players assume that it's more than this basic flow chart. But the reason that you could not do this before, as simple as this is, is you just couldn't do the back airs before. So when we f you first started coming over, if I told you to do this, you would not be capable of doing it. I promise you. So this is all of your improvements showing up, and it just is disproportionately visible. Like that. So here, what you do is you full hop double jump immediately. You don't react. So here, the problem is, is that you're not reacting to where he's going or can go. You are reacting to where he is with a 20 frame delay. Are you there? Okay. Okay. I thought you were starting to say something and I had interrupted you and I was waiting for you to say it. All right. So you're good. So yeah, here, you see yourself following him. Well, guess what? He's already here and you're here. And his airspeed is faster than your airspeed. So he's going to go all the way to center. Well, the thing is, is that you tried to meet him. So he's moving right to left. You're moving left to right. You guys crossed. And then you you realized he was going to cross you, and then you start uh, decelerating. He's already accelerated, so he doesn't have to decelerate. He continues past. And he would have crossed you up even if you... He, if he had been Sephiroth, he would have still crossed you up. Because you hard committed to that, and then you land. And then you use your ground speed, which is faster than his airspeed. Which is what is going to... Yeah, so that's actually how you catch up to him, is because... You were you switched from being high up to lower down, get down, and then use your ground speed to modify your movement speed, your horizontal speed. So you basically have to do this, and you like reverse L and then come back. So if you hit just like full hop double jumps, and then while facing center, up aired so that the the up air goes like this, so that he can't go over, or he'll feel intimidated by it, and then just straight up move away. Then all of a sudden. He's still going to recover and put out an egg, but he's going to be over here, which means he now has to fight through one, two, three, four back airs to reach the stage position. And all of those back airs probably, or the first two back airs would have killed, if they, for sure, if sweet spotted. And then any other damage he takes is going to just put him up to kill percent to over here. And then if you land with your up air, God damn it. If you land with your up air, then what happens is if you did the, the instant double jump version, then you can forward tilt his air dodge if he lands. So here. Yeah, so here you go for the up air. He has to air dodge. If he didn't air dodge, you just would have popped him up, and then you go for full hop double jump up air and fast fall it to try and react. 
So the purpose of the up air isn't to hit him. It's to specifically punish him for if he tries to attack you. Because any of his fastfall aerials to hit Sephiroth are going to get caught by up air. And so that forces him to just move away from Sephiroth. So he should have gone just gotten here. He could have tossed another egg and landed on this platform. And the up air wouldn't have hit him. And then he wouldn't have to air dodge. But if you hit fast fall on the up air so that it didn't even come out here, you could have actually still forward tilted him for landing with the air dodge. Now, granted, you shouldn't have, but it's a matter of the reason you're up airing so late in the first place is because you double jumped up here on reaction to him moving up here. So you want to preemptively go up here, and if you had up aired onto the platform, he could not have gone for this. So here, you could have actually landed on this platform and then dropped through with a back air. Like, you could have landed on the platform if he forward aired. You could have reacted by shielding it. And again, if he forward airs your shield, you just drop through with an aerial to pressure his landing. So you're not hitting, you're not punishing him directly. You're putting on another sword to hit where he's landing so that he has to block it. So you're basically shooting this projectile. So projectile. Yeah, so here, these empty hops, they're fine because it throws off his timing. But the problem here is, is that it doesn't matter that he knows what timing you're putting out. He's not parrying them in the first place. And if he was parrying them, that just means you forward till after the back air. Yeah, so here. So here. Something worth noting is that he starts waiting. So there's generally a trade-off to reacting. So here, he's waiting outside of your back air, and he's basically hoping... So you see him staying outside of back air range and moving over here, right? He is hoping that you will come to him because he realized he's not going to beat this. So he's just trying to bait you into using anything else. So what... I'm sorry? Yeah, so what you tended to do in this set is you then short hop into him with a back air, which is then less safe. So you want a back air like right here. So you can drift in with a back air, but space it so that it's out here, just outside of the range, so that it barely whiffs. Basically, yeah, with a tip. But I'm saying that you generally don't want to. Like, I would rather see you back air in place. And then, so here you land, and you look at him. So you forward tilt here. I want to see you take one step forward and then forward tilt. So it you kept short hopping toward him, like here. Yeah, like there. There we go. Sorry. So you see how you kind of short hop at him? This this was fine since he moved away. And even if he had moved in, this was fine because you just forward tilt if he had been moving at you. But when you see him dash back here, I want you to just walk up. So take a step or two forward and then, then turn around to the right and short hop back here. So here you dash. What? Towards him. Yeah. So walk up to here. Not dash. Walk. So you need to practice this. You need to practice walking between your back ears. And you're going to have to use diagonal up. So it's something you're going to have to practice. So that is very much on your practice list. So you basically walk up here because right now you can't. Yeah, like here, that was fine. So side B and then you immediately short hop back here. So there. You wanted to drift back, actually, with that. Because if he had neared here, he he actually would have traded with you or straight up stuffed it. So here? Yeah, you went too far. As soon as you reach this point, short hop up air and drift toward the ledge. So use the up air to prevent him from being able to go here. But drift front. So start it here and short hop to land here. Remember the dots? Dot, dot, dot. So start at this dot and drift to this dot. And I want you to practice that. And then... What? 
Then you walk back just to the right of the middle dot. So the center half of the middle dot. Anywhere on the right half of this platform or the left half of this platform, depending on which side you're on. And I want you to practice this specifically because you you fucked this up multiple times in this set and you fucked it up in the last set too. So that's a common... That was one of the things I wanted you to work on going into the set that you consistently were struggling with in this set too. Did you write it down? I want you to underscore it. <laughs> All right. That and reacting to the jumps. So the uh so here, so he un if he air dodges, you walk back and you forward tilt. Now he's gonna have time to press a button, but you don't care. You're walking away from him and you're giving him space. So if he air dodges, he's air dodging through this part of the sword. You're already landing with the up air, which means he's here, you're here, he's gonna have to land from his air dodge while you're walking. And then you forward tilt. He's going to have time to start up a button, but if he presses it, he got hit by the forward tilt because he's not in range and forward tilt is. So what he has to do is he has to air dodge, land, and then preemptively shield. And if you start, if he's consistently, if you see him preemptively shield twice, then you walk up here and instead of forward tilting, you do what? If you think he's not going to press any buttons whatsoever. Then do that. Yeah, because uh, grab is good. And this is a good setup for a grab. However, like if, if you are trying to zero to death him and you, you think you're going to get a, like you're at wing and he just respond and you're going to go for the uh, for a grab down throw back or sorry if you're going to go for grab down throw near to forward air and then go for back air back air over here and you just think you need to do that to win this game that's fine but for the most part otherwise if you go for this throw and you forward throw what did you really get yeah like uh, the reward is not great for you because uh, not talking about the throw because it's whatever I'm talking about the positioning. Like what you went from having this position to having this position. Like you didn't gain any position from it. You just made him less comfortable shielding. So that is good at top level to do once so that they question it. So yeah, I would say doing it once, but you've already grabbed him in this position. So for the rest of the set, you can just hold that until you really want it. And even then, if you're going to condition someone into thinking that they you're never going to hit them for being in shield, wouldn't you rather condition them for the down smash anyways? Now, I don't think you should down smash here, and I want to be clear on that. Because you lose control of your character during down smash, you do not lose control of your character during back air. So, the downside to back air is that it has a lot of startup. It does not have a lot of in lag. So, if you think that they're not doing anything to interfere with your startup, AKA, you have forward tilted their shield twice in this position. So you walk back here, forward tilt, and you know that they're just going to sit here and wait until you forward tilted their shield before they press anything. Once you have reached that position, then you can be comfortable going for the read of just short hop back air. And when you short hop back air, on reaction to them suddenly pressing something, you drift back towards center to make it safe. And yeah. And basically, they can actually sh they land from the air dodge and they short hop near in and they'll hit you for trying to go for that short hop back air. But they also have to time that. And you have to remember that they're doing this blind, which means that if you had just walked back and then you shielded, then and he goes for short hop near, if you parry that near, you get a guaranteed dash back forward smash or dash back down smash, and he can't stop you. Because he's up here, and you are super plus. So you're going to get the startup of down smash down. And he's going to have to land because he's already here. 
And so worst case scenario is he double jumps and he goes high and he has to down B you. But yeah, continuing on. So here what happens is he air dodges and look where you're at. So you get away with this, but you cross yourself up. So now you're, you went from having all this to his because you went for that forward air. And that was a choice. You went for it on purpose. If you had drifted back with the forward air, then I would think that it was an accident. But you didn't. You drifted into him. Trying to hit him. There's that fucking counter. Yeah, I can see you in the cam. Yeah, so when that happens, what what do you do when you're between stocks? Yes. So... I'm looking at you. I'm seeing you kind of tilted about it. I see you taking a breath. And now I'm, I'm less tight because you took the breath. But I want to see you hesitate in the angel platform and think about what you're going to do when you drop. And then drop down with a back air. So back air or an up air. Drift toward Yoshi. Yeah, so this is fine. See how you're invulnerable? So you actually get to... You either get to dash back forward tilt or short hop back here. here. Yeah, so you forward tilt. So, and you got that position because you went for the up air, and he reacted to it with the roll. So he rolled on reaction to the up to up uh, to the up air. So there, that's on reaction. That was good. That was guaranteed dash grab. By the way, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and this forward air, like that works. There's no reason that you couldn't have just had your back facing here and then short hop back aired on reaction to him jumping. So. I mean, back air is pretty fucking lenient. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. I'm actually going to look that up. So, fair is very active. Don't get me wrong. Oh, wait. That's the wrong one. Two frames. But, uh, back air also covers the entirety of back air during that time. Yeah. So, for the space it covers, it's about the same. Like, have I ever whiff punished you for back airing? I don't either. Yeah, so that's fine. So the problem here is if he had just air dodged, he could have drifted in and forced you into a, a juke situation. So if you're going to forward air here, at least short hop forward air here and drift back so that you can get that forward tilt if they air dodge. So always assume they're going to air dodge. Always assume that they're going to parry. Understand? Write that down, please. What should you always assume? Yeah, so this is fine. This is good. Yeah, this is all good. So here you just double jump up here. Yeah, that nair is fine too. To be fair, I think up here might have been minus on hit there. So here, you could have just, instead of doing anything or empty hopping, you could have just short hop back here to land here. Yeah, so here you get hit for the nair. Be I want to be clear on this. That nair should not have hit you. The reason that nair hit you is because look at where you drift with it. All right, also to be clear, one of the things we're going to be working on in the future is your offstage game. Not gimping. Not defense specifically. So I remember you telling me that you're getting hit here. So my solution to that, because uh, I actually stopped and I've been thinking about it. And I think the solution is pretty simple. You are going to mix up three things. You're going to mix up standing your ground with forward tilt and shield. We're going to mix up, uh, well, actually two kind of different ways. You, so I have a, if they jump at you when you're here, on reaction to them jumping, you are going to roll in. 
And then so if you don't see them jumping, you are going to full hop, double jump to center. Just make a full call out. And then sometimes I want you to just look at them straight up and just dash into the fucking center stage. So, so it's standing ground, move for center, or use an aerial that is retreating to go off stage. So those three things. And then of those three things, the three things I'm giving you for this are those. So you either roll on reaction to them jumping, you full hop double jump to center, or you just dash to center, or you stand ground and shield, or you stand ground and forward tilt, or you stand ground and try and react to what they're going to do. And then alternate which you're going to go for. The other one is you use a short hop retreating forward air. You use a short hop to the right. And use a reverse up air or a back air. Or you short hop to the right and side B. Or you short hop to the right and counter up here so that the counter hitboxes falling are coming out as you fall right here by the ledge so that if they run off and hit you you're forced to stage tech that's a positive because that way their stuff doesn't knock you out the worst case scenario is it hits you here and then if you use a retreating forward air then you should get another forward air into the stage down here and then you get the forward air jump. And then you get a double jump up air. And then you get another forward air, I think. Do you get one or two? Uh-huh. Okay. And so after the double jump up air, you're going to up B in to the left. Not to the right, to the left. Now, you're actually, let me rephrase. If you see them run off stage, then you're going to do it to the right. If you don't specifically see them off stage already, you're going to do it to the left. Because it's not about hitting over here. It's about punishing them for being too close. I did I did mean up B. Like you're all right, so just to be clear, you're off stage, you short hop forward air and you retreat off stage, and then you drift down here and you forward air down here. Below the stage. And then you use the sword jump plus double jump to up air up here. And then after you up air, you just hold up B to buffer it. And then you just up B to the ledge facing the left. Unless they, they Yoshi, is already on off stage. If you see Yoshi off stage, you up B to the right. But you f start off facing to the left because it's more important that you just grab the ledge because you just used all your resources. So that's going to be one. Or you do this, and then you can double jump forward air. Or you can double jump, and then neutral air dodge past if you think they're going to try and attack you. Then you just double jump and neutral air dodge through them and drift to center. And then you basically act from there like you would if you were ledge trapping, where if they're right next to you or you think they can press a button, you hold shield, and you face to the left. And you wait for them to press something on your block. If they didn't press anything on your block, you keep holding shield. And wait for them to finish their turn. And then as soon as they touch your shield, you just short hop away from them and put out another back air. And reset to neutral with your back air. And then guess what? It's time for the back air train. Toot toot. So that's a lot of stuff to mix up. It'll take time for you to incorporate it. But yeah, just... Basically, there's three strategic places. So on who, what, when, where, why, you want to be in three places. You want to be here, here, or here. Of those three places, you, each one is going to have you go to those three places in different three sub-places. So basically, you're going to go here via here, or you're going to go here via here, or you're going to go here via here. So short, so short long or high in, a, in a, an upside down U. And then over here, you're going to chill out here 
you're going to chill down here or you're going to go down here and then go back up here. So they're not going to be able to predict which one you're going to pick because you're just going to rotate those nine. And it doesn't... Yeah, so basically the point of having all of this divergent stuff is because it makes every other thing less predictable and it means that they're less likely to cover it. So they're not, they're not going to know what the hell is happening and it's going to give them too many things and no one in Tampa is smart enough to figure this out mid-match and no one in Tampa currently is going to VOD it, run a detailed enough VOD analysis to figure this out, that you're doing this. So just having these three things and then having three mix-ups of each one is all you need. And that's too complicated for a human to figure out. So think of the infinite complexity of the DNA. And there you go. So just having a few things has so many exponentially so permutations that it's just too difficult for humans to figure out. But you want to keep it as simple as possible for yourself. So now that you know what that is, like it's still, don't get me wrong, it's still probably too complicated just saying it like that. But essentially it comes down to you want to be here, you want to be here, or you want to be here. And you're going to mix up which one you want to be. You're basically going to think about which one of these three, and you're going to say, well, I wanted it to go here last time, so I'm going to be either here or I'm going to be here. And then you pick which one of those you want to be, and then you pick one of the... So let's say you decide to stand your ground, so you're going to pick which one of the things of the stand your ground you didn't try yet. So you're going to pick one of these that you haven't picked. So you're basically just going to flip a three-sided coin each time. And then you just flip it twice, and you're done. So yeah, flip a coin twice, flip a coin three times, however you want to look at it. And then that's your choice, and that's too complicated for people to follow. And I don't want you to tell people how you mix things up. Like, like your decision, specifically. Because that it does not benefit for you you for anyone to figure or for anyone to know now if people are figuring it out on their own and telling you about it that's different but it's a matter of if it's too complex for humans to understand then it's basically you it's smithy like i will not know like knowing what your mix-ups are i will i will have to figure out what your system is for deciding that for yourself, like you're probably just going to have a feeling for it, for which one you prefer. So you'll still have preferences. You'll still have habits. It, that just provides a form of structure that you don't currently have that forces you to be more divergent with it, like mix it up more. So this is fine. Like that was a good reaction. So this here, you just immediately short hop back here to land over here like right here on the first dot. Well, you go to the first dot, or sorry, you go to the second dot. So now you short hop back here and you drift over here to the Pokeball. And if you had done that, back air would have hit the, him. He would have nared. You're going to be here. Nair is going to land right next to you and you just turn around to your right and you grab the whiff Nair. Or you dash, dash back to the other side of Pokeball and forward tilt. Either way. So here, instead of nearing, what should you have done? Yeah. So here you're trying to punish him because you see, oh, four is right here. I can I can hit that with my short hot nair. Four is now way the fuck over here. And you're you just finished trying to nair there. And the reason for that is because you are on the lag and your brain does not process he is not there. Your eyes clearly says he's here. He's not there. There's lag. 20 frames of lag. So wherever he would be 20 frames from here is where he is. So probably about here is where he was when you neared. We'll go ahead and rewind it.
Yeah, so here he overextends. So yeah, this is when you made the decision to input an air, short hop nair. So you're trying to short hop nair him here. He's going to be over here. Yeah, so this is where he was. Meanwhile, you're over here nairing like an asshole. If you'd put out a back air, it would have hit him. But I want to be clear again. You don't care if it hits him. If he, instead of pressing nair, just jumped over here and then uh, air dodges over here and you back aired and he air dodges through your back air, he's going to land over here. You just turn around and forward tilt to the left or you take one step to the right and forward tilt to the left. And so you still get away with this because he jumps in. And so he jumped in for like a back... Uh, for an up air or back air. He probably wanted back air to forward tilt. Because he's still looking for his low percent combo starters. Which is why he gave you time. But if he had dash attacked here. He would have caught your back air. But if you were back airing here. Instead of nearing. So that he was forced to air dodge. Then he would have extra landing lag. And he would probably drift a little bit further away. And so you would actually have time for this back air in the first place. So you would get two back airs. So here. What you want to do is you want to just uh, walk up here and sh short hop up here, like right here, and land here. Use the left side of the sword to cover this section so that if he tech rolls to the left, he gets away with it. Basically, you want him to corner himself. This back air is fine. So you want him to back air a little bit higher, and the reason for that is you want to back air here. So you back aired here, which is a little too low. You wanted to back air here and or here. Or which you can cover both by just back airing this section to catch the platform. So that it, uh, if you back air right here, then it would still hit him for trying to fall off. And if he short hopped, it still would have caught him. So like so. So you do another one. So here, if you were supposed to short hop. Uh, so if they short hop and they're on the platform. You just auto count it is uh, if you see them jump at any point, it's just call it a full hop. Yeah. Yeah, so that. So, all right. Yeah, basically, if they're up here or higher and they're still moving up, then that means that they can't come down before you can because. Uh, Sephiroth falls so fast. Yeah, that was just you not back airing. So this was a technical error on your part, I'm pretty sure. That was you trying to back air and failing. So keep practicing your back airs. There, and so he got the tech roll away this time, even though he's going for the same thing. So now you fast fall back air. Yeah, so you just made the choice to not fast fall back air there. But it would have worked out for you. There you go. That's the good correct forward tilt, by the way. So this is the fail state of this, by the way. So this is why I'm telling you to forward tilt the egg. So that was the fail state. That was where he throws an egg, you hit it, you're stuck in hit lag, and he had frame advantage after. That's what it looks like. You could have just forward tilted again. Yeah, so you forward tilt that, and then you wait, and if he presses anything, then you forward tilt and assume he tossed another egg. And you catch the egg on, on reaction to it. So anticipate the egg, and then react to him doing anything as if he tossed the egg. And use your straightforward forward tilt, not forward tilt up. So forward tilt and try and catch the egg right here. So that if he dashes at you, he got hit. Yeah, so that was supposed to be a back air. Back air would have caught this. So here you want to... Yeah, so back air here. Yep. So put out another one. No. Yes, that should have been a short hop back air again. Just keep doing it. He's not doing anything to make you stop. Short hop back... No. Short, <laughs> short hop back here. Make him pay for this. He's walking you to the corner here. But you're not back airing to get it. So that worked out for you. So this is what I'm talking about. This is the exact situation. So here we go. So you just short hop back air out of here. Right? Yeah, so instead you full hops, but he here I'm telling you, you could have just short hop back here, landed to the right here. Instead. And he, again, 
he might have gotten hit. It doesn't matter. It would have pressured his shield or forced him to go over here to the corner. If he rolls to the corner, you just walk up and forward tilt at him. And forward tilt to, to hit this. And with draw back here. So here, he can nair you out of the shield because you did what? So he grabbed you. How did he get that grab? Well, where were you when you shielded? How could you have avoided being there? Uh, yes, but also, what could you have done before? So, the problem is not that you were here, or the problem is not that you didn't jump in back air, because if he had neared, that would have hit you for trying that. So, the problem is this position that you're in in the first place. How could you have avoided this position in the first place? Yeah. So. So yeah, the egg didn't even hit you for that. I do feel like you should have gotten hit for that one because you forward aired and forward tilted while he had an egg right here. So forward tilt again. Yeah, so you just rolled in when you caught yourself in the corner. So do not roll unless... When do you roll? What are you reacting to? Yes. And what he can do, and J12 will do this to you, Uh. He can short hop here, drift back here, and just forward air you on reaction to you rolling in. But at that point, all you do is you just hold shield, and on reaction to him jumping, you drop shield, and then you reshield. And if you saw him jump back, you short hop toward this and back here. So you basically match his jump back with the jump toward. But if you are facing with your back to him, that means you are doing an advancing back air. And that would normally be unsafe, except what is Yoshi doing to make this situation safe? Yes. He's specifically jumping away from you. If Yoshi is jumping away from you, you can advance forward with back air. But what should you do afterward? You should uh, walk away and then react. Walk away. Like, I want you to back air toward him when he jumps back. But I want you to hold diagonal up and away. And then react to what happened. Because if it's if you see, oh, shit, I can put out another back air, you just immediately short hop back air. All right, do you back air with C-stick or with the A button? I forget. Okay. Then you literally just short hop back air. And you are already retreating. Like you're you were buffering drift drift back with the back air. And if you forward tilt, do you forward tilt with C stick? Then you still hit C stick. And what's gonna come out is you taking a step or two away and forward tilting. So if you see him pressing a button during your back air, then you just go ahead and put out C stick. But you're gonna take a step or two because during the time where you're reacting, you are already buffering a walk away. Understand? So basically, the game fundamentally is going to basically have a pseudo gravity because you're holding diagonally up and away. So the game is applying gravity during your decision making process. And you're naturally being pulled away from your opponent. Similar to how when you'll up air, the game just naturally forces you to be safe. Because it like pulls you down faster than it pulls the opponent. Understand? So if they were buffering a walk toward you, then this will undo what you're doing, but they probably aren't. They're probably either hard drifting to you, in which case that's why it's important that you pre-walked, or they're standing still, in which case you just gave up a little bit of extra stage control before you forward tilted. But you're basically taking just a little bit of this resource, just a little bit, and making your moves much stronger. So again, it's converting your stage control into a tangible value. So it's just economy. So he could have hit you for this. He did not. 
Yeah, that's why he did this, because he was covering your dash back. He was trying to cover you just dashing back and trying to fort tilt or something. So you should have back aired here anyways. You see him dash back, which means if you do this short hop back here and he had dashed back, he would have gotten hit by the second back air. Yeah, so here, on reaction to him tossing egg. Can you reverse counter? Okay. All right, in that case, just side B. Because here, the egg doesn't hit you right away. So here, I'm going to look at what frame that was. Let's see. Well, that's not very helpful. I looked up the egg toss, and there is no animation for it. They just include the egg. <laughs> it does. So the egg automatically bursts on frame 60. So the hitbox on it is actually negative. So... I just sent it to you in Messenger. But basically, uh, probably only two-thirds of the egg is actually a hitbox or a projectile. It's not as big as it looks. Yeah. The burst is way bigger. The burst is the opposite, where it's bigger than the egg. So, yeah. Basically, you can just side B through and it should eat it. So you just side B the egg. It might be not. I want you to look into it. Uh, you'll have the thing that I'm sending you for training mode. Uh, will let you know whether or not you can do it. Although if it looks close, then just keep putting time into it because it's probably just your reactions. Yeah, this is good. So here, fine. The forward air is not fine. Yeah. So just walk forward and forward tilt here. And what would have happened is you would have hit him with a strong hit here. It would have pushed him back to here. It would not have been safe, but it means that you just dash back on reaction to being in that scenario. In which case you don't press diagonal. Forward. Yeah, so see how you don't have to hit him for this? So he rolls. So here, you just put out a short hop back here, and it's guaranteed for him to be able to shield it. But do you care? No. Yeah, so he would have spot dodged there and actually probably gotten hit by the back here. So this is the counter. Do you remember me telling you this is how he should counter it? Yeah. All right, so here is where you're excited. So now you get to side B at this. If he tries to short hop out, then he gets caught and it's going to pull him back down to the ground or he has to double jump. If he double jumps, he has to go super fucking high. Characters with super fucking high double jumps, so your Falcos, your uh, your Min Mins, your Mewtwo's, your Nesses, your, your Yoshis, your Soras, those characters can't do anything in the air after you hit them with side B, which means they have to land, deal with landing lag, and then press a button. So even though it's minus on hit, it is effectively not minus on hit because of the position. So you don't care if he presses something. You care if he nares out of its shield and eats the side B, but generally that's not how that works on interaction. So now is when you get to side B. So now you specifically, when you think, when you're in position to back air, and you, you see he's waiting, you specifically will see him waiting outside of your back air range. So he, you see how he moves away from you? Yeah, and he stops. So he's specifically making sure that you can't drift in with back air to threaten him. So as soon as you see that, side B. So when you see him moving away from back air, side B. 
if he's staying outside of side B and he's walking away from side B range, then you can just walk up and space out forward tilt and intentionally whiff the forward tilt in front of him. So like here, you put out the back here. So this is a short hop. Actually, honestly, this isn't... If you see him double jump, instant double jump up air on reaction to... So full hop is short hop up air. Double jump is IGR. Or IDJ, sorry. IDJ you up air. And then you can put that up here. You don't even have to hit him. So the up air whiffs here unless he drifts the center. So he drifts back here and you just turn around and forward tilt to the right. And then if he tries and drifts under the platform here, he gets hit by forward tilt. Forward tilt whiffs here. So uh, what you do there is you just short hop up air to the left towards center. The first start of the up air is going to whiff and then the back head is going to catch him if he tries to press a button. What happens here is he jumps over the up air. He probably air dodges here. You land here. And then on reaction, you just forward tilt left. And he would have gotten hit here. If he shielded, it would have hit him, pushed him right here. And then you just uh, immediately dash back to here, to the first dot. And then once you reach the first dot, you short hop back here in place. So here. Yeah, so this is correct. So you ju when he lands next to you, jump away from him and put out an aerial. So you remember what I was saying about having your back to him? You see how you were in position for that here? And you, but you were facing him, so you had the forward air. So you didn't forward air. Yeah. So yeah, having your back to him would have let you just jump away. So this is fine. So here, if you had buffered turnaround to the left, actually, this was fine. So here, to be fair, in this case, you were doing it correctly, and then he crossed you up. So here you could have shield grabbed him. But this is fine. So here you should have landed and forward tilted. You should have landed here and forward tilted and then short hop back. Because if you can space tip or forward tilt, then you should. Yeah, that was good on his part. So let's look at how he got that forward air. So do another back air here. Yeah, that was actually fine. So that was just really good on timing on his part. So that was good. So that, we're happy with that situation. I'm going to call this a fluke. If he does it again, I will change my mind. So just because you get punished for doing something that you think is correct once does not mean you should stop doing it. And that up smash was fine too because you were invulnerable. That B was not fine. He could have just nared you on reaction. So nair to uh, jab. So he got greedy and went for a forward tilt, which is why he missed this punish. Yep. So this is fine. Now, you, this time you short hop back air again, but you don't drift into him. So if you back air Yoshi at zero, or you forward tilt Yoshi at zero, then you do it again. But you don't drift. You just do it in place. And the reason for that is because they are negative on hit. But they also push them out. So they're negative, but you are automatically positioned to be in the correct position to do it again. Does that make sense? So you just do it again. Stop doing this. Yeah, so this all works out. So here, don't chase him. So there... You just do another back here. So that was fine. And forward tilt. Yep. And now you shield. Ah. And by the record, this is why I keep telling you to dash back. So there, I would have shielded. But I want to be clear that this, what you got was better than shield. 
Backdash is so fucking good. Yeah. Yeah, so he swung here. Yeah, no, that backdash, because it leans him forward like that, dodge the Nair. So you get a forward tilt here. Yeah, so there, that was, so rolling at the same time a forward tilt beats forward tilt, but that's fine. So yeah, that was still, I want you to keep doing that. That was good. Like, to I want you to understand that he had an air in and roll and forward tilt just to hit you with forward tilt when you forward tilted at him twice. So he played around your forward tilt perfectly twice to get one hit. Yeah, the problem here is that you back aired instead of up airing when he full hopped. Yep. So that's what started this. This is fine. You should have you were supposed to take that throw and let him press a button and then you short hop back air. You correctly up B to the ledge. All right. So here you just stand your ground, turn your back to him, and then short hop back here. So you see how he's he's not gonna fuck with this. So you have earned his respect. He is afraid of your back air, which means he's trying to bait you into back airing into him or dash attack. So if you dash attack in here, it will whiff, which is why he's spacing out here. So here, you just roll into center. Well, I mean, we didn't go over that part of the game plan. We haven't really had to. I wasn't going to go into it until you were getting your back airs down consistently. And while, don't get me wrong, you didn't do it perfectly, you did it consistently enough that you can demonstrably see that it affected your game plan and his game plan. And it was most of this game was decided by you back airing in neutral. And then you double jump back air again. No. Yeah, you could have put out a back air or an up air there. An up air would have eaten the egg. So here you could have jumped onto the platform and then just fast fall or waited a bit and then time to back fast fall or not fast fall, uh, drop through back air to cover ledge jump and then four tilted if he did get up. And this double jump would have gotten hit by that back air. It's good. Yeah, so don't full hop back, just short hop back. The reason is because this full hop back goes way further. You can just use a double jump button. Yeah. Uh, it will, if assuming I remember that correctly, that should always give you a short hop. Like it's intentionally designed into the game. Just like if you press a second, second shield button, you can't shield grab or roll. Uh, with that said, I get short hops 100% of the time. So I think if you practice it enough, you'll get it. So I would just practice it every single day and you'll eventually get it. What can you play melee Fox? Do you have a melee setup? All right, just play melee and short hop with Fox. Literally just short hop with Fox a hundred times in a row. And you will probably never make that mistake again. And for the record, melee Fox is a three frame or three frame jump. So it's the same short hop. Yep. Because it is less forgiving to get a short hop. Like you, there's no macros or anything like that. And you can't accidentally get like a, like if you press an aerial and you full hopped, 
it'll give you the short hop anyways. Which means that there, you can accidentally get short hops when full hopping. So it means that you the only thing that affects whether you get a short hop for melee fox is whether or not you input a short hop. There's no shortcuts. In Ultimate, there are shortcuts and workarounds. So if you don't get cutesy and you just learn how to do it raw, then there it also is going to enable other things down the line just by having the skill. So here you get the short hop back here again. So you get a short hop back here again and drifted back to the left. You just felt intimidated because of the eggs. So I want to note, he, I think he's only hit you with two or three eggs. But it's enough that it shut down your neutral. <laughs> just like you hitting him with more than three back airs shut down his mindset and he's tilted as fuck. Like he's he's getting ready, or he's already upset in game one. Yeah, this is fine. There he could have just up aired you and that was the end. He tried to nair you because he reacted to the ledge jump. And for the record, this is one of the things I was telling you, so just do that from here. Just full hop, double jump to center. And just take it. And then when you full hop, double jump, just react to what happens. So if he chases you right away, air dodge to center. Like neutral air dodge to center. If he doesn't chase you, then back air. Yeah, you keep using empty hops instead of just back airing. Short hop up here. Actually, you didn't have time because this is so laggy. Yeah, if you do that, you can't short hop up here. Yep, so that's the fail state, just forward air. You could have done a forward air here and just pulled back. Yeah, so that was his stock there. He could have just short hop back aired out of shield and killed you. That should do it. Yep, and there he could have just air dodged to the ledge or just drifted back and he would have been fine. But that's the whole point of what you're doing. And now he's he's out of it, man. So this... Good. I mean, you did a good job. So yeah, you saw how you could afford Tilted the second time? I don't even know if it shows up on your window. Okay. So small. Yeah, that's that's a fine strategy in this particular case. I want you to take a deep breath and focus on just basically focus on your drills. Like use your use your mind's eye to put you in the drills. Can you do that? Like when you're in training mode? Yeah, well this is I don't know if you can do this because you've never tried it before, I'm get willing to bet. Yes. Well, specifically in this case, if you're feeling a lot of pressure, just focus on playing it in the match. And basically, anytime you're like, God, I can't even play, I want you to understand that the moment you think that, this is no longer a tournament match. This is now training mode. And all I want you to do is to practice getting your inputs. And I don't care if you win or lose, just fucking throw the set if you have to. Just practice getting your inputs. And while you feel that, so pressure is nothing more than a hormonal response. So basically you're just on drugs. So once that happens, what I want from you is to basically say, okay, I'm on this drug. I'm probably going to be playing on this drug, but I can't practice under this drug. So it's time for me to practice now that I'm on this drug. 
So I don't care about the match. The moment you feel that way, it's kind of like going to the gym. Once you get the pump, use it. Yes. So I don't care about the match. Just be grateful that your opponent was able to help you reach that point. The whole point of getting into the match is to reach that point so that you can practice making your inputs. Then just go to town on back airs. And then we'll come back here. We'll talk about why you lost and how you can work on the adjusting your training. So the whole point of tournaments and going to these brackets is for you to get to this point so that we get to see the limits of where your, your training mode plus one is. Yeah, that, I think that's how we're going to go with this. Is you, You're currently playing it well in training mode, so now we're going to take it to training mode plus one. And what defines training mode plus one is whenever you feel pressured and you feel like you're going to be making misinputs, that's your opportunity to practice in a way that you can't normally. So just be grateful, take a deep breath, and get into training mode. Start just practicing your back ears. So the point of you practicing this and me telling you to practice these specific points, practicing going to these specific positions, practicing going to these specific points on stage, and pressing these specific buttons and buffering things specifically. And the reasons I'm being so particular about how I want you to buffer these things is because I want you to get it to the point in which you can wake up, not be fully awake, pick up a controller, and be playing all these positions correctly without even opening your eyes. And once you get to that point where everything is just muscle memory, then we get into pressure. And when your brain shuts off because you're just so overwhelmed by pressure and your brain shuts off and it's like you're not even conscious, then, well, guess what? When you're not even conscious, you can still make those inputs because it's so ingrained into your memory. So that's what that's why we're looking at this because now we are seeing which parts of your play are ingrained into your memory. And this tells us which ones we want to get in training mode. So. Basically, most of these things I'm sure you're getting in training mode most of the time, but we want to take it from 90% to 99%. And then we're eventually going to reach a point where we're switching from 99 to 99.9. .9. And obviously, you're going to have diminished results, or sorry, diminished returns, but that's what this whole point is. And at that point, you're going to have to fight against Vinny or something to push you into your 99.9. Your .9. So it's going to be harder to find it. So right now, this is pretty easy because we're just finding these opportunities. But that's exactly what these are. These are opportunities. There we go. So he outplayed you three times in a row and got the third hit for a dash attack. You're now at 16. If you do uh, yeah, here, if you had just jumped back and then up B diagonally here, then you would have been fine. Yeah, so there he could have tossed the egg to catch you and be out of position so that you would be forced to drift here. And then he could drop, run off stage. And if you up B, then you wouldn't make it back, which means you have to charge it. So then he tosses an egg to interrupt your up B. And he gets a guaranteed second egg toss because you have to go all the way down here now. Because it pops you too far to do it horizontally. So now you have to go down here to up B. So then he gets a second egg and he'll just chain you with eggs until you die. This is fine. So here you had your jump still, right? Or did you use your double jump to get horizontal? All right. So just use your drifts to get that so that you can double jump up B back. So here this is fine because he's high up. There we go. Short hop back here. Run up here. Do a raw short hop up air and land where? Okay, and why are you doing an up air here and not back air? Well, specifically, what where is he? Like, what dictates whether or not you're going to back air up air? Well, 
Uh-huh. What part of his height specifically? Like which which heights determine which up airs you're gonna put out? Okay. Yep. And so IDG up air, and then uh, can you full hop double jump up air and get the auto cancel on the platform? Okay. In that case, just IDG up air here, and then land. So that he's forced to land out here. And then you're going to do what? What what are you throwing the back air out? Like what are you sp what are you timing and spacing it to hit? The egg throw or the egg? Okay. Why the egg? With what? What? Uh, when is it not down angled? Correct. But which part? So there's generally two kinds of egg tosses Yoshi has. There's up here and down here. So if it's up here, then what do you do? counter so you can counter or you can short hop back air back or if you short hop back air where are you drifting to which part of it yeah okay so right here so make sure you're to the right of this dot. And then what are you going to do when you're there? On reaction to what? Okay, and if he grabs the ledge, then you're going to do what? Be specific. Four tilt where? He grabs the ledge. You react to the ledge by moving where? Tipper four tilt what? Are you trying to hit him for green, hanging onto the ledge? Correct. Uh, you want to walk back here. So you're walking up here to threaten to Ford tilt him. So basically you walk up here. If he doesn't grab the ledge, he's eventually forced to double jump or egg toss, correct? Like if he goes, if he doesn't grab the ledge, then what eventually happens? Okay. So what does he have to do? Okay. So how is he going to grab the ledge? Right. So, uh, what are you going to do to that? You can just forward tilt angle at the ledge to hit what? Well, the egg specifically. If you think he's going to be, like if you're downward angling for tilt, you're still t spacing for the egg. And if the egg doesn't form, then oh well. That's fine. You're forced. So if it worst case scenario is it collides with the egg, the hit lag on the egg stands out and then it will two frame him. Or it stops you and it delays his ledge grab because he doesn't move into the forward tilt and then he grabs the ledge later. But either way, what do you do after 
your Ford tilt clanks with the egg and he's off stage. So where? Okay. And then what do you do when you're, what do you wait to react to there? All right. So you're waiting and you're reacting to what he does. So if he ledge rolls, you forward tilt his get up, you forward tilt. The same forward tilt covers both. If if he jumps, then there's two kinds of jump. Well, first, you want to you uh you have to pre-cover the ledge jump. So if you swung at his two frame, you either short hop near back here. And if you do that, then you don't have time to forward tilt his get up. So basically you forward tilt here and then you immediately short hop near if you expect him to ledge jump. And if you after you short hop near, you drift back to here. Now, if he ledge rolled when you short hop near, then you land right here to the in outside of the, the dot right here, and you grab his ledge roll. Now, if he did get up, then you can't punish that by doing this because you don't have enough time before he's invulnerable. So what do you do? So you short hop near. Yeah, you forward tilt here, then you look to the right and towards center, and you short hop near over here, and you do what? You don't have to do a retreating back here, because he's here. So he's here, you short hop back here, and uh, actually I take that back, you do do a retreating back here. So you do a forward tilt at the two frame, buffer a turn around, then short hop near, you're short hop nearing over here so that you can grab his ledge roll if he rolled. And you just buffer the grab, by the way. Because there's nothing he can do about it as long as you're fast enough. And then if he did get up, then instead of grabbing, you just short hop back here. And then you do a late drift back. Because you don't want to drift back very much. Just a little bit. And then if you saw him press anything during the back air, you forward tilt. And if you didn't see him press anything during back air, you do another back air and get back to your back air train. If he did a preemptive ledge jump, then he got hit by the nair and he got sent out here. And you follow the same rules as always. Is he at full hop height or higher? If so, short hop up air. If he's higher, do IDJ up air, yada yada. You get the idea. And then if he does a delayed ledge jump, then is he full hop height or higher? If so, if he, let's say he does a ledge jump so that he's right here and then he's dropping in with a nair, is he ledge hop height or ledge hop? Or sorry, is he full hop height or higher if he's right here? No. So what do you do? Correct. So basically you nair over here. If he jumps here after you've already nared and you're landing here, then he's over here. You're over here. You short hop back here. If he four airs, then you guys probably trade. And he's going to be like right up here. So he's going to be pretty high. If he nairs or it does literally anything else, then at best he ledge jumps and then air dodges down here. The back air whiffs and you're here and he's here on the corner. And you do what? At F tilt specifically if you saw him press a button. But if he directional air dodged over here, he's not going to be able to do anything. But you also can't guaranteed forward tilt him before he can shield. So what do you do? You do another back air. Yes, sir. If you're greedy, then you want to walk up here and space a forward tilt here. So that it whiffs just outside of him. So that if he runs into the four tilt, he got hit. 
And you want to mix those two things up sometimes just so that he doesn't feel comfortable staying outside of your back air range. But for the most part, just keep spacing your retreating back airs. And someone is going to eventually come up to you and tell you, hey, you can't just keep retreating your back airs. It gets too predictable. I'm going to beg you to please ignore them and just say thank you for the advice. Because it is going to be too predictable. The thing is, is that it doesn't matter if people predict it. Four knew it was happening the whole time. And was he able to stop it? No. Just because you know it's happening, if you don't have the skill to deal with it, then it doesn't matter that you know. All right. So here. Yeah, if you had done a short hop up right there, you would have landed faster because I think you go for a... All right, let me confirm here. I think you go for a full hop. Yeah, so here, so you should go for a short hop, but you're trying to back air him directly instead of... So this is, again... Yeah, it doesn't matter if you hit Yoshi. The percent doesn't matter. Positioning matters. And if you had short hopped up air here, and he air dodged through like this, you could have just walked up and grabbed him and back thrown him and gone for another back air. So there you just needed an upward angle, the forward tilt. But you got the reaction, so that was good. So get, got the back air, do it again. Do it again. Yeah! So now... You reach that point. So here, you can just run straight to the center. Just run to fucking center. You saw him full hop. Yep. And so here you do it. You did it. Good job. That was good shit. Yeah, this is exactly what I'm talking about. So you just get that. You know how to do the... Uh, you know to shield while you're running, correct? Like, don't let go of the run? Okay. Yeah, so you just... On reaction and being anywhere near you to threaten you, you shield. And you just hold that shit and let him hit your shield. If he grabs you, then he grabs you oh fucking well. Good for him. Well... This is what I would like for you to change. So you should have just run kept running in the first place, but the your decision making here was good. So here, you already know what I wanted you to do out of shield here. Yeah, short hop to the left while putting out a back air. And what would have happened here is because he drifts in. Yeah. And now this is closer than it, or this is further than it looks. So you drop shield and dashed. If you had short hopped and back aired for, then you would have been here. So this still would have whiffed, and he would have gotten hit. But even if he didn't get hit, he that would have been because he was over here, and you don't care. So and then after that, if he had gone over here, then you would have gotten another back air, and then if he came at you. During that one, then you would have drifted back with it. You would have been here. And then another back air, and then you would have been here. So you would have gotten three back airs in addition to whatever he got from you here. That's all good. No, that's awesome. All right, man. Well, you got the gist of what I want from you. So what are you going to practice? Actually, I won't take up any more of your time. 